Wednesday afternoon. Martin's shave tests. I got something a bit special. How about that? Fancy case, rather a fancy razor. This is a Metro Gold. It's a G E O one eight six. Whatever. It's got lots of spurious stampings on the other side, saying how it's made in Germany. It's very hollow ground. They're extremely proud of it. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's got gold washing. It's got a beautiful gold panel. A rather nice case. Anyway, point today is this is a new old stock condition, but it hasn't got an edge. Needs an edge, but also today I got a Charlie Forest Honestone come through. Look. How about that? I've just flattened it. I've taken all the chips off the edges. It had a little bit of a dish in the middle. That's now gone. So how about a nice English slate, high quality slate edge on a very nice German razor? I've already taped it because it is new old stock. Um, the edge I've put the Sharpie on, as you can see, so we can estimate the geometry. Let's get started. I got my Nanowar Professional, the 3K. That's what I like to start on. It's not a coarse stone, it's quite a nice stone. Anyway, here we go. Oh, shut up. Let's have a look. First things first, check the geometry. Yep, yeah, perfection. It's almost a shoulderless. It has got a shoulder guard, but it only goes about halfway down this rather nice seven eighth blade. I do like the occasional larger blade. I've been doing a lot with small blades, but my true love is sort of six eighths upwards. But I will show you with anything. Anyway, here we go. That's the geometry checked. All we now have to do is ascertain what sort of feel there is. I've got a very slight slurry on the Nanoa. So it shouldn't take very long. I'm a believer that although people say, according to some of the really greats out there, that um, a slurry can, if anything, deaden the edge. But for me, when you're starting, on an edge it doesn't really matter so let's see already we've got a reasonable color look at that let's have a, a wash off ho, 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 ho. yeah I'd say it was almost there let's wipe off this rather offensive black mark that we have on the edge the Sharpie, and we'll be ready to progress. Off it comes, easy as that. A little bit of white spirit. Often we'll use um, the slurry off the stone. The only trouble is this has got its original high polish. Don't really want to put anything other than white spirit in a tissue. There's no edge damage. So really, I just get a few more laps, cautious laps. I tend to use um, two hands for a simple reason. I can control the pressure. Much easier. I have this morbid fear of ending up Japanese. And the Japanese barbers, when they hone or honed, their straight razors, they did it one handed like that, and they always ended up with the nose being destroyed. Most of the ones that I've had the misfortune to own and have seen advertised have got a distinct taper going from the heel to the toe, and uh, it's irredeemable, you can't do anything about that. So, no, thank you. That's why they come up second hand on eBay because no one wants them. I've tried to um, put right a few. I'm not saying only the Japanese, I'm sure. In fact, I think, I 
think I've got one of the Eckelstuna Swedish razors that had that terrible thing done to it. It is very sad though, isn't it? Because if you use two hands carefully, you'll never get that happen. However, each to their own. Oh yeah. Right, I'm not going to use a packing peanut because I haven't got any. I'm going to use a baby tomato because I have got some. Oh, very nice. But not, maybe a little tiny bit more on the very nose. That's why I prefer the tomato. You mustn't, you can't expect it to push cut as uh, I've seen so many times and done myself with the polystyrene, the packing peanuts. All you can really attempt is to do varying pressures, a very slight slice, but um, it works. And although now nobody's using packing peanuts, so you can't use them anymore, chaps, I've been searching everywhere. Nobody does them. They're all going green. This uh, stone that I've just shown you, that came down uh, via its nice eBay box. And uh, that was full of old crushed newspaper, which is now what people use. They don't use plastic. So those days of using packing peanuts may not be much longer. Ah, uh, yeah. Look at that. That's got it. don't know if you can see that, but... Oh, bloody hell, that is good. Good steel. Very good steel. The other thing I forgot to mention, it's got a broad etched banner, uh, which unfortunately my tape has obscured which says magnetic steel. Is there any other type of steel? However, yeah, I know there are some very rare, strange steels uh, of the, <coughs> excuse me, my spit stainless variety. And some of, the, some of them are theoretically very little magnetic properties, which means to me they're not proper steel, but never mind. I won't ramble on. A few finishing strokes on the 3K, water only, no slurry. Nice and gentle. And that is one very nice bevel set. Right. Remove and carefully wipe my beautiful Nanoir. It should last 10 lifetimes if you're careful. Onto the, oh, equally nice actually, my favourite, which is a 5k Shapton. I did lap the 3k. I'm not going to bother lapping the Shapton because I only used it the other day. And it was uh, very nice, very flat. So let's not bother. Instead, a tiny drop of water. I mean, I must admit it's tempting, but oh, all right, I will. I want to raise, raise a slight slurry anyway. So let's see. Yep. Yeah. How about that? That's now as flat as the English economy. Wonderful. So, here we go. This is a few laps on the 5K, just to remove any deeper scratches from the 3K. Very light. The other thing is with a very deeply hollow ground blade, it's so much safer, in my opinion, being on a synthetic stone once you go on to some of the uh, natural stones as a, as a finisher, for instance, the dreaded black Arkansas, you've got to push like a weight trainer to get anything done. And that, of course, deforms your edge. So I'm not terribly fond of Arkansas unless you really, really are practised and know what you're doing. This is why I'm using European stones when it comes to natural stones, mostly. I've had a, a lot of luck with um, slates. The Welsh slate, the dragon's tongue, cheap as chips. 
and that works very very well um i use glycerine with that the italian slate i've got a big italian slate and that works very well <laughs> again i finished with a little bit of glycerine and water as i shall do with this charmly forest when i get around to it do you know what i'll virtually guarantee that's removed the scratch marks I can have a quick look, I suppose, if I have to. Excuse me being lazy. But I do find, once you've done enough of this, you don't really need to keep looking underneath magnifying loops. Though this is a nice one. It's a little belter, actually. Yeah, there's nothing naughty going on. I would say I need a a little bit of a swooping movement towards the toe. It seems to be just a tiny bit more scratchiness on the toe. But I don't use the toe much. So, am I going to kill the edge? I tell you what, let's kill the edge. Test it on the tomato. Not completely dead, but I wanted to do just a couple of little swoopy movements to get that uh, toe absolutely right. When I say right, I just thought I might have left just a few 3K scratches. Not that it matters. You're not shaving with the bevel. You're shaving with the very, 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 very finest edge, which is, of course, nothing to do with the flat sides of a bevel let me just get this done two seconds right i'm going to call that it and i've only very lightly killed the edge i'll guarantee that's all right yeah it is oh god yes it is okay so we killed the edge brought it back not going to bother killing it anymore I'm going to go straight on to 8K because I'm not in a hurry, hurry. I do like to get things done. This is um, my lovely 8K Nanoa Jakampaku, which I can't even pronounce. And this one, because it is such a nice stone, I am going to actually put the lines on just to show you. Ta da! Let's get those done. Be very cautious you don't contaminate your stone with the last offerings. Wash very carefully. I don't suppose it happens very often, but if you're really naff and you had a, a large bit of old slurry from a previous coarse stone stuck on your diamond plate, in theory, you might actually be able to push it into the aura, into your softer stone. Well, I say softer, your finer stone. And this is, is a very nice... A lot of people, for some reason, they, they don't like the uh, the Snow White. Um, the reason I like it so much is, although it's a softish stone for a man-made, it has the huge advantage of showing up exactly how much metal you're taking off, in which case you get a very good idea and then you don't really need to be checking under your glass all the time. So anyway, I'm not going to kill the edge because I know the edge is good. Let's put a tiny bit more water. There's a very, very slight amount of slurry, which I'll soon get rid of. The wonderful, much respected Devon Jackson gave a wonderful dialogue on the evils that can happen by going only spine leading how um, he then has to go to very strange methods well I think they're strange methods of pasted uh, newspaper to get rid of any potential wire edge I, I don't want to do that I'm I'm a simple soul he's absolutely right and uh, he's been doing it for years I would say his soliloquies on honing 
are an absolute must if you want to know anything about stones and honing Devon Jackson. However, not detracting from the others, there are very many great, great, great thoughts and masters out there. Right, water only, 8K. Ho, 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 smooth. The reason I don't like tape very much is you can't really get a true feel. You're feeling the tape on the stone as much as you are the poor little edge. But that should be very, very nice. I'm sure other people will tell me that I'm not sure just how fine a Charnley Forest slate is. It looks and feels very nice when I was flattening it. I'd say it was quite a lot finer than the Welsh dragon's tongue, but I don't have the ability to check. Can you just see tiny tiny bit little little tiny bit of slurry now hardly anything because it's water just water so I'll do one more couple more passes in running water and in theory that's it for the 8k yes yeah, that's, that's feeling pretty smooth I saw a fair amount of discoloration which you can see so evident on a white stone and as you can see there's none now so I reckon that's taken the 8k to its maximum which is of course what you're supposed to do to get the maximum out of your stone I think with the coarser strokes coarser strokes and, and a, a slurry I find you get the maximum out of a stone but uh, we don't need the maximum. Right, <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna dry my fingers on a towel and <laughs> I've been waiting all morning to do this. I'm going to put away some of my kit and I'm gonna hand hold this freshly brought back Charlie Forest. I'm going to give that a feel. Now that's interesting. This has a little bit of glycerin just to make it smooth. Ooh, what's interesting. Yeah, I can feel there's a fair degree of grit there. But not enough to uh, feel in any way coarse. But you can feel there is substance there. I don't know if I can move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm an idiot. Yeah. That feels nice. What's perplexing is you can actually feel there is some cutting going on. But I can't for the life of me see any swarf. This is probably a good thing. We've already got down to a nice fine 8k edge. I'm assuming this isn't necessarily a finer grit. I suspect it is, but not necessarily. I suspect what we're doing is actually altering the scratch pattern into a natural scratch pattern from what was a man-made scratch pattern. Yeah, I think I'm quite impressed with the feel. This is the first time I've used a Charnley Forest slate. Isn't that a lovely colour? It's great pleasure flattening this. It gives a beautiful, beautiful white slurry when you're uh, cutting it with a diamond plate. You have to be very careful to completely clean and wash the stone. I've heard some rumours, I'm sure they're true, 
that when you're using a um, Ardennes cotical, if you use a diamond plate, you don't wash all the residual slurry off. The slurry that is caused by the diamond plate has in fact broken little garnets in it and gives you a very uneven scratch pattern. So wiser heads than mine noted this and what they do is they actually, and this is I think the genius, thoroughly wash the now flattened cotical stone and to bring up a natural slurry using, of course, another cotical. And um, that way, this is cotical to cotical, garnet to garnet. Because I've, I've wondered why in the past I've had slightly mixed results with some of my cotical edges. Some are magnificent and very kind afterwards. It's the aftershave that counts. It's the after result that tells you if you've got a good cortical edge. I don't think there's a lot of point going much further on this. As far as I'm concerned, that's done. Let's have a look. I haven't got my microscope, but I have got a, a reasonable 40 magnification, so they claim, 40 magnification loop with a little LED. In theory, that might be enough. I think the idea of most people, including myself, says 60. Well, no, that's all right. No sign of the normal, what I would call the normal natural edge. To me, this could be straight off a of an artificial stone, a synthetic stone, but it looks good, very even. Do you know I'm going to go with that? I'm going to say nah, I haven't got all day to mess about. Let's try a baby tomato. Well that's interesting. On the heel, it's not as sharp. Ooh, very, very good on the nose and the centre of the blade. I think we need just a tiny, tiny touch more. This is probably me being negligent, so I'm going to just do a little bit of a, a naughty. And I'm going to put all the pressure on the heel because the heel, as you can see with this design, the heel sweeps upwards towards the tang. And I think that's why it's very, very, very slightly less sharp. However, it could just be me. Let's have a test. No, it's fine. <laughs> right, chaps, that's it. Um, I'm going to take this tape off and I'll show you the rather nice etching underneath. See my nails want to work today. Right. There you go. Magnetic steel. What a lovely blade. New old stock, and as far as I can tell, I think we're ready to go and uh, do the fine stropping. I'll strop it, test it again, and I'm going to show you with it, and hopefully you guys might want to watch. Anyway, if you are subscribing to my channel, this sort of nonsense goes on all the time. I'm afraid I can't stop, I can't help myself. New stones, new razors, different razors all the time. Anyway, chaps, thank you so much for watching. And um, I'll see you all soon.